As important as a protagonist can be to a story, a good companion or companions can be a make or break for a game. Because these are the guys who will be the ones who will be travelling with you, questing with you, and most likely the characters you will know the best once you've actually finished the game. Hi, it's Dreamer from Emmy Odyssey, and today I'll be looking at what makes a good video game companion, in my opinion anyway. And this is pretty much an opinion piece, so you may agree or disagree, but let's just get into it. Now, a while back, I looked at a wishlist for my ideal companions for Mass Effect Andromeda. And let's just say, while I don't really hate the companions in Mass Effect Andromeda, they don't really fit into the ideal that I had set up for myself. I guess one of the issues that the game does have with their companions is their motivations and backgrounds, as well as their general writing, which wasn't really fleshed out. Something that is quite difficult to do in one game, but let's just look at one example. Cora Harper is originally your father's second and then yours. She hugely admires the Asari, mainly because of the time she spent with them training as a huntress. And this trait became Cora's main feature. It defined her, much to my annoyance. However, when Cora is shown that her idol Sarissa isn't as infallible as she thinks, Cora's reaction is underwhelming. She shows disappointment and somewhat looks at her own motivations, but she never really has that reaction you'd expect from seeing something you've always admired, something you've based your life upon being flawed. But Bioware have tackled a very similar story arc in a very different way before. Take Liara to Sony. She greatly admires the Protheans, spending nearly her entire life studying them and building them up in her imagination. It's shown fairly early on that Liara had spent much of her time focusing on the Protheans most likely due to her childhood, being isolated due to the stigma of being a pure-blood Asari, due to her relationship with her mother, and due to her personality. This is why Liara idolized the Protheans as something better to look towards. However, in Mass Effect 3, when Liara encounters Javik, a living Prothean, and learns the reality that the Protheans may not have been as pure, advanced, and moral as she had originally believed them to be, she first denies it to herself, then takes out her anger on him, angry most likely at herself in the situation that the Reaper War has left her feeling. This is the prime difference between Liara and Korra. The Prior's motivations and ideals, though very important to the plot, aren't really forced upon you, but rather you discover them as you get to know her. And when Liara feels threatened, she has a much more realistic response than having somewhat of a re-evaluation that seems to be more like trying to move a character story arc than actually trying to advance it. A good companion will not just say what they want outright and just share their feelings, their hopes and ideals and disappointments. It should be something you discover as you get to know them better, making them much like a good person. Now obviously, for most games, with a few exceptions, if a companion is going to hang about with you while you're questing about, you'd be hoping that this companion would actually be capable of helping you in battle rather than hinder you. Now this means good AI. Your companion can be witty well written and interestingly designed but it doesn't really mean anything if it literally makes playing the game worse. Take certain AI companions that can get in your way while you're shooting or fighting or companions that don't actually assist you but rather watch you die. We all know at least one. An opposite to this are companions who can help you fight, revive you and in most parts make elements of gameplay easier and more enjoyable. From providing ammo, health, strategic advice and clues to actually helping you fight. The best RPGs can have companions that, if treated well and organized well, can make or break your playthrough. Take the lads from Final Fantasy XV, who not only work with you to do combos, but also heal and revive you, which can be an utter godsend when it comes to crucial boss battles. This combat mechanic works really well and ties into the story dynamic between the four central characters. So this should be obvious, but without personality, What's really the point of having a companion with you in the first place? They have to be someone or something that you love that adds your appreciation to the game world. And this can be done, in my opinion, in various numbers of ways. Animals, creatures, and inanimate objects can still hold as much personality and sentiment as more quote-unquote human characters by the way they are shown to interact with you. Just look at Dogmeat, Apona, and the companion cube who can still hold the hearts of fans. But when you talk about iconic personalities, I think I remember those who are much more grounded in reality. But when you think of Sully from Uncharted, sure you think about his charm, but it's also the bond he has with Drake, which is something that everyone can relate to. When you think of Garrus, 
You remember that reliability that makes him beloved, but also that very human shyness. And when I think of Cortana, you think of loyalty, but also that insecurity that she shows later on in the series. This is probably what separates those really great companions to those who aren't so great. Ones you don't remember as easily, the ones that outright irritate you, and probably worse, the ones you can't even relate to. And a lot of times I think the voice acting can help create this connection and help add so many layers to the character on the screen. For example, there would definitely be no Vicarian without Brandon Keener. Companions are probably like a lot of things in life, hit or miss, and down to personal opinion. To me, the best companions are those that are well explored but with a subtle backstory, those who can help you on your journey rather than hinder you and allow you to relate to them, becoming actual companions in the real sense as you explore this game world. But what makes a great companion to you and do you have any examples? Let me know in the comments below and if you like this video please like and subscribe and please share this video to help the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.